This presentation highlights the wide range of clinical effects reported following snake envenoming, particularly a special reference given to Sri Lankan snake bites. Medical practitioners come across a variety of clinical features in victims of snake bites. Snake venom enters the body through bite site and distribute to peripheral tissues to cause clinical features. They can be divided into three main categories as local effects of envenoming, non-specific systemic effects and most importantly the organ specific effects of envenoming. Identification of the clinical features and appropriate management is vital to save the life of the snake bite victim. Snake bites and accidental injury. Snake venom is introduced to human via the bite site. Venom deposits commonly subcutaneously, intramuscularly or rarely directly into the blood vessels. Venom spreads locally around the site of bite. This disrupts the tissue surrounding the bite site and produces local effects of envenoming. Venom absorbs into systemic circulation via lymphatics but not via the clapyrolis as the snake venom toxins have higher molecular weight. The venom distributes to all other tissues including muscles, kidneys and nerves tissues. There are several organ specific envenoming features following snake bites. Coagulopathy is the commonest and the most prominent features of snake envenoming worldwide. Coagulopathy develops as a result of either activation or inhibition of specific pathway in the coagulation cascade. This leads to consumption of clotting factors and factor deficiencies in patient circulation which lead to hemorrhage. This is known as venom induced consumption coagulopathy. Increased capillary permeability due to the toxins acting on the vascular endothelium further contributes to hemorrhage. The second most important effect of systemic effect is neurotoxicity. Snake venom toxins bind to synapses and alter the neurotransmission. Disruption of skeletal muscle cells is reported following some snake envenoming. Snake venom toxins destroy the muscle cells membrane and liberate their content into the circulation which is called rhabdomyolysis. There is a wide range of clinical features due to its myotoxic effects. Another fatal systemic effect is nephrotoxic effect. Nephrotoxicity is created via two main modes. There are direct toxic effect of renal tissues and nephrotoxicity due to the rhabdomyolysis. When the venom enters the body through the bite site, the toxins react with the surrounding local tissues to produce saline and even necrosis of the tissues. Then toxins enter the bloodstream and immediately interact with the coagulation cascade. Since coagulopathy and hemorrhage are the earliest systemic features to develop after a snake bite, they are known as central effect of snake bites. In contrast, the development of other toxic effects such as neurotoxicity, myotoxicity and nephrotoxicity takes time. The time period for the development of clinical features due to systemic toxicity depend on the local blood supply to the tissues, speed of the blood circulation, the dose of venom injected and the size of the toxic molecules as well. And a specific clinical feature indicates the toxic effect to that the particular organ or to the tissues. The table summarizes a variety of clinical effects following snake bite in Sri Lanka. Both Ceylon crate and common crate causes neurotoxicity but do not cause coagulopathy or other clinical effects. Cobra venom is able to cause combination of neurotoxicity and extensive local tissue necrosis. Russell swipe venom is able to affect almost all the systems in the body causing coagulopathy, neurotoxicity, myotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. It also gives rise to a local tissue necrosis. So scale viper envenoming produce only coagulopathy and hemorrhages. Myotoxicity is the leading and the most common clinical feature following sea snake bites.
extensive myotoxic effect may give rise to nephrotoxicity as a result of rhabdomyolysis. Humpnose vipers who are also belonging to vipers produce coagulopathy, nephrotoxic effect and local tissue necrosis following envenoming. Local effects of envenoming vary from mild local pain to extensive tissue necrosis which could be fatal. Local pain at the bite site is the most commonly encountered effect particularly following viper bites as their venom contains strong pain inducing toxins. Mild to severe swelling that may even extend to central compartment of the limb is another common local effect. Fan marks play a key role in diagnosis of snake bite as sudden pain in the limb could also be due to an abrasion from the local trauma. But it is difficult to find the fan marks after some snake bite, especially in the case of trade bites. Bleeding from the bite site could be directly due to the skin puncture during the bite, but can also due to the coagulopathy created by the venom. Bleeding for more than 5 minutes from the bite site is considered as an effect of the coagulopathy due to the venom. Buisin is possible due to the disruption of tissues at the bite site. Buisin is followed by discoloration and blistering. There are two kinds of blisters reported in snake envenoming. It could be a hemorrhagic blister or a non-hemorrhagic blister filled with a clear fluid. Local lymph node enlargement is a sign which indicates entry of the venom into the lymphatics. Local tissue necrosis caused by some of the snake venoms can involve the whole limb or even spread into the central torso and became fatal. Anaerobic secondary bacterial infections are commonly reported following local effect of snake envenomy. Non-specific systemic effects of envenomy are the signs and symptoms which are not related to the bite site or to any specific organ system. They could be due to psychological alteration following envenomy or due to the fear and agitation which develops after a snake bite. They are headache, faintishness, nausea and vomiting abdominal pain, giddiness, palpitation, sweating, tachycardia, hypertension or hypotension. Presence of non-specific systemic effect alarm the clinician to be more vigilant about the patient on further development of more dangerous effect of envenoming. Specific systemic effect of envenoming are classified based on the organ or the particular tissue involved. Coagulopathy and hemorrhage collectively is caused by disruption of the vascular endothelium, coagulation cascade and the platelets by the snake venom. Bleeding or hemorrhages could be external such as bleeding from cannula site, the bite site, hematemesis, melina and hematuria. Internal bleeding intracranially or intraperitoneally could also occur and not be discovered until the patient became critically ill. Neurotoxicity is prominent effect after crate envenoming, sometimes after cobra envenoming and uncommonly due to Russell swiper envenoming. Toxins which reduce release of acetylcholine vesicles at the presynaptic terminal are called presynaptic toxins. Some toxins structurally alter the presynaptic membrane and the damage become irreversible unless newly regenerated. Toxins which bind to acetylcholine receptors and block the neurotransmissions are called postsynaptic toxins. The research conducted so far has only proved the effects on peripheral nerve system but not on the central nerve system. The development of neurotoxic effects occurs in the descending manner in the body. Initially, partial or complete ptosis occurs progressing into the external ophthalmophagia. This is followed by difficulty in talking, difficulty in swallowing and limb weakness. Respiratory muscle paralysis occurs towards the end stage of neurotoxicity. At the extreme stage of neurotoxicity, neurotransmission blocks completely at the postsynaptic membrane resulting in complete shutdown of the motor system. This could mimic coma and brain death although the patient's sensory system is intact but with continuous support in the ventilation and other care, patient could be recovered.
Myotoxins in the snake venom act mainly on the skeletal muscles. They disrupt the integrity of the sarcolemma and liberate the muscle cell contents into the circulation. Two toxic components are released in this manner, namely myoglobin and potassium. Excessive myoglobin gets concentrated in glomeruli and causes secondary renal failure. Elevated potassium level alters the electrical conduction to its system of the heart and cardiac muscle contractility, which may give rise to arrhythmias. Clinically, patient will express muscle pain and tenderness. Patient will develop myoglobinuria and features of acute renal failure. Early myotoxicity could be detected by serum potassium level, urinalysis, and ECG. This is predominantly seen in sea snake bites. Renal effect of snake envenoming can occur due to the toxins directly affecting on renal tubules and also due to rhabdomyolysis. Hemorrhage into the tubules, tubular degeneration and necrosis lead to acute renal failure which is recognized by low or no urine output. The minority of patients with acute renal failure go into chronic renal failure. Therefore, long term follow up of victims of snake envenoming is very important. The renal effects are commonly found due to Russell Swiper, Soy Scale Wiper, and Hump Nose Wiper envenoming in Sri Lanka. Let's look into some uncommon effects of snake envenoming. Endocrine effects are reported after Russell Swiper bite in this region. As a result of coagulopathy, the Russell Swiper bite can lead to intracranial bleeding and bleeding into the other endocrine organs. Bleeding into the pituitary gland can give rise to acute pituitary insufficiency in which the patient may go into shock and hypoglycemia. Chronic pituitary insufficiency may develop after months or years from the snake endonymic and result in generalized body weakness, loss of secondary sexual characteristics, loss of libido and hypothyroidism. Clinical features suggest the damage to a specific organ system. Therefore, the detection of clinical features enable early antivenom treatment. Frequent monitoring would help to detect the prognosis of systemic effect of endonyming as well as the patient's response to the antivenom. This aid in further management of the patient. For example, in victims of snake bite who develop neurotoxicity and ptosis, administration of antivenom should be done with closely monitoring for signs of respiratory failure. In addition, some clinical features help in identify the type of snake attack in a retrospective manner. The table elaborates how the clinical features could be used in identify the snake bitten. The clinical features are indicated in the first column as shown in the table, the Russell Swiper endonyming can give rise to all the clinical features in the list. But there could be instances where only some of the clinical features are evident after a Russell Swiper bite. Indian crate bites can give rise to prominent neurotoxic effects and other effects of endonyming are rare. Even the pain at the bite size may be absent as crate venom contain toxins which analyze its property. Cobra envenoming may produce some local effects of neurotoxic effects. Hump nose wiper and soy scale wiper envenoming give rise to a similar clinical picture. But since the distribution of these two species is different within the country, the bitten snake could be identified in such occasion. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you.